Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and today we're going to do our first mock draft. And I think that is finally an amazing time of year. You get excited about these young prospects. You may not even have a combine this year, but who cares because the NFL draft is right around the corner. And I say that like two or three months, so we're going to have plenty of mock drafts and you're going to get it all sick in your system. We're going to do some trade backs. We're going to go some trade ups to see what we can do. We might trade up to trade back. How about that? To switch it up for you um and we're gonna the, you know we're gonna use pff i like to use sometimes the draft network one um but the trades they're not there unless you pay for it where they'll give you trade options okay i'll trade you this for that where pff is more of a hey we we're calling you to trade with you but hey what are you gonna give us it, and i don't like that i want you to offer me and then i figure out so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put seven rounds we're gonna do it man we're gonna go for the, you know, you're lucky this is in the 90s where we're going 15 rounds, but we're going to go seven rounds right now. We're going to go Dallas Cowboys, and we're going to set it to default because I don't want to just mess with their settings to kind of make it favor more us. Uh, we're not going to do that. So we're going to enter the draft now. And look, of course, Jacksonville on the clock. And of course, Jacksonville is going to take all, all 15 minutes of their time. Even though they have months to decide, you know how it goes. And just in case somebody tries to give them a Herschel Walker trade, they want to be able to just sit there and uh, re- Bamp their franchise, which man, it's it's, it's going to need it. Uh, so, anyways, we're going to go ahead and hit start. We're going to get Jacksonville the time and the clock, and it's going to take them like two seconds because obviously this is not real life. Um, so, anyways, so as we go into, of course, we got New York coming up. I think right tackle cross is a big option for them, and that's exactly what they took. Um, uh, who are they going to pick another? Another tackle, which I don't think realistically they would take, but two great tackles for them, which honestly, New York needs that help. Um, you got it's a lot of mock drafts where you got uh, Tyler Littenbaum going to uh, Philadelphia, which, again, I don't see that really happening. You're going to see here with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, you know, th there's some three right there. They To me, I think Philadelphia has a good chance of, you know, popping out of there to try, you know, maybe next year's first. You, you know how they are willing and dealing, and they've been doing pretty good at that. So you got to give them credit for that. You know, Dallas, you know, we wish we had first round picks like they have this year. And, and to trade back, I mean, we need the guys that we are, we're coming up with. So, you know, I just don't see that as a future thing for this team to finally be pulling out. So let's see what they happens. Again, a lot of mock drafts show Tyler Littenbaum going to Philly. I think the reason why they would do that was because of spiteful drafting. Um, you've seen Philly do this before. Um, the tight end, Dallas Goddard, they got him because they jumped in front of us to th thinking that we needed a tight end. And of course, we did at the time, but... Dallas Goddard has not been very good for them, and, and yeah, they extended him, but again, really, honestly, has he been great for them? No. And when it comes to other spiteful stuff that they've done with DeMarco Murray, it has not worked out for them. So for them to spitefully jump in front, or not even jump in front, just take Tyler and Mom, uh, which is exactly what they did, um, it's not really a surprise there. But why would you take that when you have Kelsey sitting there? Other than if you're going to put Limbaum into a guard position, but by that point, you're just wasting his talents and hoping that you're just keeping him there for what? When Kelsey finally retires, uh, that's just, to me, stupid. Um, but when we come into ours, we're, we're, yeah, we have some trade offers. Um, I'm, not, I'm kind of surprised here because, honestly, we have some, uh, we don't have a quarterback really there. I mean, Desmond Ryder, I, I just don't see that as, a, as an option to come up. So if the people are coming up, they're coming up maybe for an offensive lineman. Um, but let's see some of these things. See how far back we go. See, 48 pick. I'm not dropping back to 48, 49, to 60. I'm not going to have a good offensive lineman by that point. Um, so it's just not. I mean, either way, I want to be in a position to be able to get somebody of value. And dropping back to 40-something is definitely. He's going to give you a contributor. That's for sure. But you're not going to give you that. Trent McDuffie, that's a good, good pick. Devin Lloyd, man, another great linebacker. But I think we're going to pick our linebacker second, third round. So I really, really want to get an offensive lineman. And honestly, Trevor Penning is looking great. You got Zion Johnson down here. Uh, he's looking really good, too. Um, and, of course, defensive line is always a great thing to pick up. And I think we're going to get our defensive guys later on as well, too. So uh, I want to get Trevor Penning. Um, he's a big dude. Let's go ahead some of his profile here. Uh, Penning is yet another uber physical run blocker at the position. Stands six foot seven, three hundred and twenty one pounder, um, and had a great you know rating. And it, honestly, when it says great rating, you got PFF. I, they're so up in the air with what their great ratings are. The guy could brush his teeth weirdly differently in the morning, and somehow his PFF went up. So I don't really trust a lot of what they're ranking. 
But Trevor Penning on tape and on, when you watch him through the season, he has definitely been a guy that you can rely on. So I would definitely take him here. Uh, let's go ahead and take our offensive linemen that we can go ahead and kind of start solidifying that offensive line. The ones that was doing the bad blocking, the penalties. Um, I think that's a big thing. Um, the musical chairs within the position, the coaching that needs to definitely change. You got McDuffie going there. Uh, here comes some of our linemen there. Uh, quarterback actually taken by the Detroit Lions. Wow. Uh, you got Roger McQuarrie, which a lot of people think that he's going to end up with Dallas. Um, and then you got, you know, obviously your offensive line, I think, is going to start going off here. You're going to see probably Zion Johnson probably pop off the board here. Um, if he stays there, <laughs> damn, hate being right. Um, if he was there, I definitely would have snatched him up as a second rounder. So it's probably a good thing that he did it because then this would have been a boring draft as we picked nothing but offensive linemen and we go into the future with our stable of offensive cows. So, um, but anyways, defense line, you, of course you saw why it just go off the board. We definitely would love to have picked him up in the second round, but you got Travis sitting there too. And he's been a really good defensive end as well, but I think this might be the time. See, there goes Travis Jones right there. Big defensive lineman. Um, you got Chad Muma. Man, that, that one right there is my is probably going to be my pick here. Um, and the reason why I say that, and I'm giving you the reasons why, is because when you look at our linebacking core, you have a Jabril Cox that is a really good coverage. And and as honestly, isn't the best at runs. But to me, when I watch him on film, he can stop the run as well. He's not going to obviously come in, in there and just pop, pop your running back. But he's definitely going to get him on the ground. And I like that. When you got a guy like Parsons, of course, Parsons, what can I tell you, man? He just wreaks havoc in your backfield. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do back there. He's going to do what he wants to. And then you can kind of just throw the ball around whether you like it or not. Um, but when you look at a guy like Chad Muma, this guy, he can go into the line. He jumps over trash. He goes sideline to sideline. And he's attacking the ball. A run-stopping linebacker is definitely a compliment to what this defense is already showing you with a coverage linebacker, an LVB, LVE getting out the door with that supposed cover linebacker. Um, I think you need to put somebody that can stop the run in there as well. And But you got Jalen Tober coming in there, and he would be a great uh, replacement for a guy like Gallup that's walking out the door or Cedric Wilson. If you do not sign, and my whole thing is, you know, some of them I, I do. I mean, who would not want Gallup back and even Cedric Wilson? But... For this stake, we're going to say Chad Muma. Uh, he has good defensive ends there. But I'm going to hope that defensive ends are going to be there in the third round that we can possibly pick up. Uh, maybe we can even trade back once. But on this one, I think I just want to just go straight up and, and kind of just fight that urge. Uh, Jalen Petrie, uh, that was a that'd be a good safety. They have him in here as corner, which I don't understand that whole move. But he would be a very good pickup as well. Sky Moore, that's Jeff Cavanaugh's guy. Um, he's a playmaker, dude, a little dude, but I think he's going to fall further in the draft. So Leo Chanel, I, I'm really up in the air with this guy. Uh, he's a good linebacker, but to me, he can, he reminds me a lot of LVE where you can get caught up in some stuff. Uh, he's not like, he's not hitting your, your, your running back with all his force, but he is bringing him to the ground. So secure tackler, I think he's going to be a really good backup guy. Travis Jones, I think it'd be the only guy that I would pick other than maybe Nick over here. Other than Chad, and I want to get our linebacking core back to where we're at. So I'm going to pick Chad. And hoping that one of those defensive ends drops, as sure as heck ain't going to be the defensive uh, tack, uh, tackle there and Travis Jones. Um, if he drops somehow, I would, I, you know I'm going to be picking him. Um, but of course, Winfrey was another one that they show that's coming to us as well too. So I mean, that would be a heck of a pickup as well. So let's see what ends up happening. A tackle. I'm not. I'm always up in the air with this guy. I mean, he reminds me a lot of our Adam Cohen. Um, just very raw, very big dude, but needs to kind of just develop more. Jalen Tobert went to the Bears. Poor Jalen. Uh, but hell, hopefully him and Fields can do something over there. <laughs> oh, here comes the Commandos. Uh, they're going for running back. Uh, let's see who do they end up picking in the first round. That's a, that was going to be a very good question over there. Let's. Let's go first round. Who's Washington pick? They met Matt Coral. Okay, I could see that. Um, so, I mean, they're not totally off on that one. So, here we go. Romeo now. Let's see. Who else do they got here? Ryan. All right. So, who we got? Ooh, we got our defensive end. Boy, Mafia, that that guy right there, Senior Bowl. He, he, I look at him, and when you look at his size, you, you kind of have that whole 
you know, is he going to be able to develop in the NFL? Can he needs to get bigger. He he's definitely has the ability to get around people, but will he be able to transition any kind of success into the NFL? I think that's the only reason why I may not pick him in this spot. Um, and I Kirby, man, that that's the that's the spot there. Um, we got Dylan here, which I think would be a very good guard. Uh, good. Uh, and then I got a great tackle here. I'm gonna try to get one of these these tackles and guards to solidify this offensive line. Maybe in the next draft part itself. I think this right here, it's really the thing. Who do you want? Do you want your edge rusher that's going to replace Gregory because maybe they're not going to be able to sign him because of all those picks uh, or all that money they're going to need to sign? Other guys like Curse, you know, a great leader that really honestly needs to be put in here for multiple years. Will they turn around and replace Randy Gregory with Fowler that just got released from the Atlanta Falcons and the old Dan Quinn guy? So I think those are spots as well, too. So if you guys got signed a guy like that before the draft, obviously Kirby's going to be definitely your pick. But you don't really have any safeties back there right now. Free agents in general, you you only have one guy in there. So I mean, oh, this is going to be a heck of a of a toss up. Um, but I'm going to go Kirby. I, I I know I said on the other one I wanted to go edge rusher, but I think I'm going to go Kirby because I just don't think he's going to last until that next round. Um, we might we can still get a good edge rusher in Josh. Uh, from uh, Duke, I believe, uh, or Kentucky. I can't remember his name. Um, but he was a good edge rusher as well. Um, he might be able to get him in the later rounds. But again, unless you're trading in the actual draft here, it makes it really hard to get all the guys you really want. And so that's why when you can really discipline yourself and kind of just let the draft do its thing and you pick one guy at a time, it really kind of lets you go, okay, I have to choose one. If Dallas has to choose one. You, you kind of have, you put yourself in their boat where you're not going to get every guy, and trust me, you know, the fact that if one year they get one of your guys is just amazing. If it's not a top pick, it's hard once it goes past the second or third round who you're going to actually get. Um, I know a lot of guys within these chats that I talk to that they're amazing at some of this drafting stuff. They know they've watched some of this film. Um, I'm, I watched some college football. I definitely was in it more <laughs> back in the day. Um, but um, it, it's, it's still amazing to watch. The college football playoffs is really what kind of hangs me up and I don't get huge into it. Um, so as we're watching these guys come off the board, um, Marcus Jones right there, that would have been a good one. Uh, he's a good punt returner as well. So I think uh, him going to Eagles is not going to be his best coverage guy, but you know he is a good punt returner. So I think that would have been great for us. Oh, here we go. And there was our two guys. So we got Dylan Parham. Uh, you got Kellen Deshush, uh, but I like this guy here, so I, you know, I feel bad that I don't get his last name. But this was all the Josh guy from Kentucky that I was talking about. Um, I feel that if I, it's one of the three right now. So if I either pick guard, your your edge, and say if we just picked our safety, so we're gonna go ahead and pick our edge. We're gonna go ahead and at least get somebody on the edge that we can kind of go. Okay, he could possibly be a future piece. Um, you don't get that amazing and you're hoping that you replace that with a guy like Dante Fowler and yes when you look back at the stats the Fowler's position you know numbers aren't amazing but that's the reason why you may get him at a discount and the only reason why he was doing as good as he was at the time and not last year was because he was with Dan Quinn and you know how Dan Quinn is he'll get the best out of everybody um so as we watch these guys come off the board we're gonna we're gonna speed this up because now we're gonna decide what we really don't care about these guys coming off the board as much uh, let's go next one down a little bit faster here. Yeah, too bad the NFL draft wasn't like this, where you kind of just figure out who the heck you want, and they kind of let it do its thing. In three days, they drag this thing out. The first round, def the first day should definitely be the first two rounds. Um, so here we go. Now we're gonna go into here. See, this is this is where we're, we're you know your big guys are gone, your big defensive ends are gone. Um, you got running backs. Uh, yeah, this is a nice one right here. I think your tight ends, your tight ends are gonna be a good one as well too. You got Cole Turner. Uh, you got Jake Ferguson. Uh, Cole Turner is going to be more your receiving type of tight end, while Jake Ferguson is going to be, of course, your freaking tight end that can block. And when's the last time that Dallas had a really good blocking tight end? So right now we have three picks right there. So I think with these three picks, we go ahead and get some weapons for Dak Prescott to actually have. So when I think I'm going to go two tight ends and a running back, but I think I'm going to pick my running back first. Um... And I think why I'm going between these two here, Hassin Haskins and Rashid White. And I think I'm going to go a little bit Haskins more because he's bigger. Got six foot one, 220. Uh, let's see. 
And then you got he yeah, has six foot two, two ten. And they got him going in the fourth round. So the fact that he's dropped that far. Because I mean, really, when you got Zeke, you got Pollard, but you need somebody that's gonna replace Pollard. So do you get a faster type of running back? Maybe go up here and you, you maybe you get Utah's uh where's Utah's running back here? Maybe he's still here. Da, 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 da. Let's take a look. Uh, Devontae Price, that's a big running back, but he's, again, might as well just take one of the guys up there. You know what? I, there he is, TJ Pledger. I think that's another running back that's very fast and stuff. So I think we're going to take our receiving tight end. Since we are honestly need to replace Dalton Schultz, eh, that that whole thing is, you know, we're not getting a guy like that back. He's going to definitely be demanding $12 million a year and not him in general, but the way that he's played for us, I mean, He's honestly a guy that really didn't come to his own until this past year or so. Maybe last previous year as well, too. But we're going to go ahead and pick another tight end. But I think this time, you know what? I am going to actually pick my running back. I'm going to pick White. He's a bigger dude, but I, I just feel like he's going to be a better running back in the NFL. And I get calm about this, but, but um, no, they're Jake Ferguson. So. All that stuff, and I wanted to get my blocking tight end, and the Jacksonville Jaguars took him. Um, so with our last pick, who are we going to pick here? Hmm. We could put Pleasure and we get our our fast running back. Um, then we get our receiver, another receiver, and Dixon is a very fast receiver. 6'4", 220. He's a big dude, actually. For some reason, I was thinking somebody else then. Let's get, let's get him a target. So we're going to go ahead and pick up Dixon here, and we're going to let this draft just kind of go fastly simulated through, um, and so we'll go ahead and hit another draft real quick and do some trades, and see how far back we can get, and see if we can kind of wheel and deal, and see how that would look a little bit, so at the end of this NFL draft, this first one, as I explain a thousand things to you, so I apologize for dra for really dragging this out, but I really kind of want to get those big guys' names out of the way, because we really haven't been able to talk about them, uh, Trevor Penning, great tackle that we may be able to push inside to guard if we do not put left uh of course collins into the guard position steal back in but I, I really think this is a guy that could possibly replace um you know tyron smith you know at least he'll get playing time within that first year when smith finally does get hurt <laughs> and you got muma of course complimenting a a linebacking core that's definitely gonna need more linebackers than just the, the one pickup Kirby Joseph, somebody to put in our secondary that can actually start becoming part of the future for this team that hopefully can kind of solidify that thing and, and really give some pop. And, and, and if you bring anybody back like Curse or even Hooker, those guys could be able to teach Joseph how to play some safety up in the NFL. Of course, you got Pascal. I, I think that's a good pick if we could, we could not get our edge rushers in the beginning. Um, Cole Turner, good receiving. To really honestly replace Schultz. We got a good running back that we could possibly need a third running back, a fourth running back, um, and that's a good option right there if you don't pick up stuff. Um, and then, of course, Dixon, a big target for Dak Prescott. Um, and you're hoping your other receivers like Simi Fajoko actually take a step forward this year. Um, and maybe they can sign one of those guys like Gallup for a one-year deal that wants to come back and maybe possibly prove himself. Um, or even Cedric Wilson that, you know, I, I think if Cedric's smart, he'll go out and make his money somewhere else because – Really, honestly, if you come back here, it's just going to have to be at a discounted thing. So let's go ahead and hit another mock draft. We're going to go ahead and do this one. We're going to go fast, and we're going to actually go ahead and hit start. We're going to kind of let it do its fast thing, uh, which is not really surprising some of the thing, and see what happens here. All right, so we're going to get one trade here, and we're going to go back. I do not want to go back, but if we're going to go back from 24 all the way to 45, I want your draft pick. Okay, so... We're going to just go back. We got a couple of options here. So, boom, just like that. We went from the 24th pick to the 45, 77, 104, 115, and 191. So, we're just going to see what happens here. Of course, your offensive line are going to be off the board. So, the offensive line would probably going to be the first thing that we're going to want to get to uh, kind of counter what we just did. Zion Johnson sitting there perfectly. So, we're going to go ahead and grab Zion Johnson. Good guard that we could definitely forget about putting Collins. We're going to leave Collins in here. Maybe even Collins over at the left. I, I don't know. Maybe your Collins is your swing tackle while Steele is your right tackle. Um, so when we get into this part here, we got no trades. 
But I think this time we are going to get either our safety, but I think we're going to get our defensive end. We're going to go ahead and just pick our defensive end, and we're going to see if maybe uh, Muma, and he just went off the board, so he's not there. But you got a nice linebacker here as well. Chanel's there. Um, you may get your receiver, Sky Moore, but let's wait. Uh, man. He's a small. He is. He's a small little linebacker. Look at that. They got. They don't got him at a very good rating. I mean, wow. He jumped up. Um, of course, Oklahoma. I mean, is it because of those defensive ends and the? T I, I don't know. Um, a lot of guys here that is. You know, Channing. Ch you know, Channing T Tindell. I. I think I would pick him as a linebacker right there. Uh, Max Mitchell. Uh, that's a great one right there. Um, a core. Oh man. So let's let's see what if maybe we can trade again. Nah, because some of these guys aren't gonna be here. Maybe if I can come off and see. Yeah, 7788. I think I'm gonna take my linebacker here. I already got my defensive end. I need another linebacker. And Leo should know I he's a good linebacker, but I think I'm gonna go with again, I think I'm gonna get Channing here. And maybe a guy that I could have probably picked up on the 88th. I think that's what the gamble that you had to kind of take. Uh, but I'm going to take my safety here, too. Uh, hopefully that boy Mafia kind of drops down to the 104. Um, but he doesn't. Uh, so this time, I think we're going to take Dylan. Um, last time we didn't. He stands about six foot three. Good guard. I, you know what? Honestly, to tell you the truth, maybe we'll, we'll take Kellen again. Uh, because, you know, we already got our guard in Zion, or do we go ahead and just go ahead and take our wide receiver? Uh, you know what? I'm going to take our wide receiver. I'm going to give us a playmaker, a really good playmaker in the sense of even possibly our, our funny, but we're going to go ahead and I am going to take either Tyler Smith. Man. I think I'm gonna take the other one just because he's been here. he's been in the Arizona State going against better competition. So let's go ahead and draft him. Um, see where we're at 126. <laughs> and both of those guys are sitting there, man. Oh, who else do we got here? You know what? It's gonna have to be some kind of offensive lineman. I think that we might want to reestablish that guard. Um, too bad we didn't really get our center in the first one. If we were to get our center in the first one, a tackle, and then uh, a guard, that would have been an amazing revamp in the whole off offensive line in one offseason, just kind of like the defense in general. Um, so let's go ahead and look and see what we have here in the sense of 165. Man, it seems like they really wiped out this thing. You got Alex uh, Lindstrom. That would be a very good backup possible for right tech. We're going to go ahead and draft our center. I think that's what. Not a great center, um, but definitely. I don't know, and I don't, maybe in the sense of the equivalence of what Tyler Biotish is. Um, but here we go, 178. Uh, I mean, who do you pick? Do you, you know, do you go with a different running back? Uh, you don't really need the running back. You need your tight end. So let's go with our blocking tight end this time. You know, we're going to flip it around. Maybe Cole Turner falls to us in another thing. Okay, so we got two more picks. Do I trade back and maybe pick up some more? Like, I'll, I'll trade you this, this, and this. For this 191, and the airline went for it. So I, I got their future as well too. Um, so now we drop back. Now we got two in the spot here. Um, and so maybe yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up. You know, I again, like I said, I told you not to repeat. You know, people, but here I am doing my thing and repeating. Uh, so we're gonna pick up Haskins. Uh. Because honestly, we need a good big running back. I think Haskins would be a really nice one addition, especially since the other guy was good. Um, and then maybe a linebacker. I want to say yes to a linebacker. Um, and I and I say this because honestly, these linebackers are getting to the edge here. You might have somebody. Let's see. I don't know. Let's see. Who's your quarterback? Uh, wide receivers. Rambo? Wow. <laughs> like, who do you pick? I mean, this is kind of like the, the meaningless one here. Uh, maybe. 
see, and then I get a quick draft, and then we try to finish it up, but then we got a crappy ending because I cannot figure out who the heck I'm going to pick for my last pick. Maybe I can just trade it off and, uh, ooh, let's see, maybe we go a punter or kicker. There we go. We haven't, you know what? Let's go kicker. Let's, let's give <laughs> Zerloin some competition. Um, but anyways, let, let's, let's hurry up and let that simulate, and then we'll kind of look through real quickly what we got. Um, and, and honestly, I feel better about this one. Once you get some kind of trading going on, you, you feel like, okay, I got, I'm sitting in a position. I can go back. There's, there's all these guys that are sitting here are, are playmakers that other guys want to come up for. Um, so getting a guy like Zion Johnson and Travis Jones and Channing Tindall, uh, Kirby Joseph, Sky Moore, Kellen, uh, Dylan, Alex, Jake, I, it's a good one. I mean... A lot of these ones, of course, are very big playmakers. A lot of teams are not going to allow you to pick all these guys. Um, so to fall in love with them, I've seen other guys with other type of draft picks. But a lot of these guys I tend to like because, you know, Zion Johnson, definitely great. Uh, dropping as far as he did. If we were to go with some other draft competition, which we will in the future things, I will be going with Draft Network as well, too. I'm going to try other stuff. I, I love the... The walk the mock that uh, you got the Cowboys vlog they love to do. I love watching that stuff. Um, so again, this is my first draft pick, uh, mock draft in general. So I'm, I'm interested to see where Dallas goes in general with anything. Free agency is really going to kind of morph what the draft kind of becomes. But this first year of what we had was amazing. I gave a little blooper reel at the end of this video just so you guys can kind of see what I had to kind of go through. There's only a couple of them. But something that we I went through, and it was a lot more, but it wasn't an idea that was given to me until later on in the season. So I give you a little bit of bloopers, but I appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. I'm Primetime Phil, and like always, don't forget to always ring that bell. See? There's a blooper for you now. That's the difference between a great team and a Super Bowl team is what kind of depth you have behind those starters. When you look like a when you look at a gore, like our own whether it's their side or our side, who are you think is gonna be the who you who's are you? Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Happy Victoria Victorious Monday. You feel great about a receiving core. If Amari Cooper was to go down, do you feel good that Amari Cooper Ah damn it? Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. I'm Prime Prime. Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and today we want to discuss a little bit about the New Orleans Saints versus the New Orleans Saints. The Saints, you know, of New Orleans. Because they have a Robin Hood type of approach with, you know, you're stealing from the poor and giving to the, you know, it's Rookies like Israel Mukumu, Nashawn Wright, and of course Kelvin Joseph doing their thing, making it hard for a decision like putting Nashawn into the safety position because. Thank you guys for watching. Like always, make sure you subscribe. I'm Primetime Phil, and like always, make sure you ring. Ah. Not in a negative way, but in a positive way, like he did in New England. That can be a big factor that can change it. Oh my god. I was doing my closing statement, and I was hitting this perfect, perfect stride when I get a phone call at the very end of my video. Oh, stop it. Yeah.